What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, I like to talk about stuff that I'm interested in. All right, and some things I'm really interested in are mental health, addiction recovery, but I'm absolutely fascinated with psychology. And to get a little bit more specific, I'm really interested in learning more about the cognitive and behavioral aspects of psychology. And basically that means, why do we think the way we think? Why do we do the things that we do? And something that has always been something that is on my mind is, why are we so irrational, right? Why do we think such irrational things? Why do we do such irrational things? So those of you who don't know me, I am a recovering drug addict. So I ask myself, I look back at my history and I try to understand why did I keep snorting these pills and destroying my life when I knew it was bad for me? right? I worked at a rehab for a little over three years. I, I watched this play out with thousands of clients sharing their stories and, you know, the hundreds of clients who would relapse and say, why would they do this? This is so irrational, right? Like you were in treatment, you, you, you saw that things were going well, why would you do this? But in the broader scope of things, why do we stick up for people and completely neglect the facts of a situation Right, like I think a great example is look at Donald Trump, right? Uh, Trump supporters, I don't think they're stupid, but I ask myself, how do intelligent people neglect the facts and just completely support this guy and make excuses for these behaviors, right? So I was recently reading this book called uh, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. It's by these two amazing psych psychologists and it actually brought to memory this situation with Logan Paul that surprisingly is on my mind a lot. I've mentioned it in previous videos, all right? So let's discuss, let's get inside the minds of Logan Paul fans. But again, like the reason that I love learning about this stuff and the reason why I try to look at the way I'm judging others is because I beep, I flip it and I'm like, okay, Chris, how are you doing the same things, right? So anyways, those of you who don't remember, uh, Logan Paul, he, uh, he used to do a lot of vlogs. I think he just started vlogging again. But anyways, he took a little trip to Japan and he terrorized the, the whole area of Japan. Toyota, I choose you. No, no, no. <laughs> now you'll never catch them all. Boss, watch this. Ah! Uh, and he ended up taking a trip to the suicide forest, all right? And yeah, something that I'm really interested in too, by the way, and I, I wanna do some research is, uh, is yeah, why, why does Japan have such high suicide rates? Because a lot of the research I do, you know, a lot of people compare, you know, uh, uh, the culture of Japan and they say, oh, look, look how they handle these situations, it's so much better, and like, that makes sense to me, but what doesn't make sense is why suicide rates are so high. But anyways, back to this story. Uh, Logan Paul, he ends up finding a body in Japan while he's vlogging and he films that body, right? And a lot of, uh, a lot of backlash happened. It caused, you know, a ripples throughout mainstream media. I think, you know, that was the start of one of the mini adpocalypses and everything like that. But everybody's sitting there like, how could somebody go there and film a body, right? And it was like in the thumbnail and it was up for like, I don't know, a while before YouTube actually took it down. I think if I remember the story correctly, it was even on the trending page, right? So when this happens, you think nobody, absolutely nobody could support this dude. There is not one person out there who would say what this dude did was okay right? So I can't remember how long it was after. Like this story was like two or three years ago. So bear with me. All right. I'm trying to tap into the little old hippocampus and pull some memories out. All right. But uh, a few days after it happened, I believe it was, he came on and he, he'd made an apology video, right? And it was just completely out of character of him. A lot of people criticized it and said, you know, it was scripted or whatever. And like me, I, I, I don't like judging apologies because they are what they are, you know? I, I think we get too in the nitty gritty of what, what they should have said, what they shouldn't have said, and da 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 because 
an apology, especially to that massive amount of people, like you're never gonna please anybody. But anyways, here's the part that's always on my mind because he says this. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. So after that, after that, after he says that, after he tells his fans not to defend him, not to stick up for him because he, he did such an atrocious thing, like the Logan Paul crew, like all his fans out there were like, screw that Logan, you're dumb. We're gonna stick up for you. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> right? Like this is, this is like the pinnacle of human irrationality, right? Telling people, don't stick up for me, I screwed up. And they tell you, the person they idolize, no, screw you, I'm gonna stick up for you. And that baffled me. And like, this, this is on my mind a lot. I still remember it like it was yesterday, the reaction on Twitter and everything like that from his fans. I'm like, what? Like, but it's not about this constantly being on my mind, but when I think of like, human irrationality, I always think of that situation, always. So anyways, in uh, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me, basically the entire book is about our good old friend called Cognitive Dissonance, all right? This is a psychological theory. I might dive into it a little bit more and kind of explain the, the roots of it, but behaviorism with uh, B.F. Skinner was a really big thing, and then um, this dude, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he came around, he's like, hey, I think that, you know, behaviorism is cool and all, but let's look at this dissonance, right? So what is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is when you have two ideas in your head that don't quite go together, right? So what happens is, is we start to justify the one that has the least amount of pain for us, right? Like this is how we lie to ourselves and our brain just creates this whole story because our brain doesn't like being in this dissonant state, right? It's like, no, let me figure this out. So when I look at the Logan Paul situation and his fans doing this, like dissonance theory would assume or predict that what happens is, is most people, most people, unless you're struggling with like severe depression or a lack of uh, self-esteem or anything, most people aren't gonna say, I'm stupid, right? Most of us think that we're smart. Most of us think that we're intelligent, right? So put yourself in the shoes of a Logan Paul fan when this is all going down. And watching this dude that you look up to admit he was wrong and admitting he screwed up. So in that situation, we have to realize it's not so much about how they view Logan Paul, it's how they were viewing themselves, okay? So we have this sense of self, right? I am a good person, I'm a giving person, I'm a caring person, right? I am a smart person, okay? So when Logan Paul admitting that this was a terrible thing, the fans in their head is saying, well, how could I like somebody who did something so terrible, right? See the dissonance? I'm a smart person, so why would I follow somebody who did something so stupid? So that is when we start to create this story in our head, right? And I would imagine, obviously there's no way for me to you know, know this for sure, this is just a theory, right? Is that, no, I'm a smart person. When I supported him after this happened, that was a smart move. So the most logical thing to do is to double down on this idea and still defend Logan Paul even though he doesn't want me to defend him, right? See, like I said, it's not so much about Logan Paul, but it's the way the audience was seeing themselves. There's a great story from another um, book uh, that I absolutely love. It's called The Craving Mind, written by Dr. Judson Brewer. He's a great dude. I interviewed him when my channel first started uh, years ago, right? But anyways, in his book, he explains uh, this story about, like he loved like the Tour de France. Like <laughs> I've never met anybody who loves the Tour de France, but he loved the Tour de France and when Lance Armstrong, like Lance Armstrong was like his dude. And when Lance Armstrong got caught doping and he admitted 
to doping, right? Judge shares this story in his book about how he's like, no, no, that that can't be true, right? Like that that there's got to be some mistake. Maybe he was pressured into saying this. Da 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 da. All these things, right? And there's that dissonance again. So I want you to think about somebody like Dr. Judson Brewer. He is like a neuro, uh, a neuroscientist, right? He's a smart dude. So that's where that dissonance comes in. Like he's a smart guy. How could he? you know, be a fan of somebody who was cheating or so obviously doping. You see what I mean? Like, it's really fascinating. And I, I, I've i talked about some of this stuff a little bit on my uh, Instagram stories lately. And I have another video or two that I'm gonna make around the subject of cognitive dissonance. Like one of them involves uh, repressed memories and false memories. I might do one about this like religious cult type thing that was absolutely mind blowing, but this one psychologist predicted exactly what was gonna happen. But again, this video is not an attack on Logan Paul's fans. Whenever I learn about these things, I try to look at myself and say, oh, wow, like why, why am I so irrational? Why do I do the things I do or think the way I think when I'm presented with evidence, right? And after just finishing an entire book about cognitive dissonance, it helps me like step back and look at different situations. For example, like right now, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm down 12 pounds. I've been trying to eat better, going to the gym, staying on that New Year's Eve resolution. My goal at the end of the year is to have lost 50 pounds by the end of 2020, right? And you know, it, it hasn't happened as often as it used to when I would diet, but like every now and then I just have like a, a cheat day, right? I've probably only had like one or two, like, but like, oh my God, I'm gonna puke. And I sit there and I'm like, why would I do that? Why would I do something so irrational? I know that I'm trying to lose weight. I know that I wanna lose weight. So why would I do something so irrational? You see what I mean? So it's not so much about judging others, but when we notice it in others, it's important to, in my opinion, to turn that, that script back on ourselves and say, what irrational things do I do? What have I done that's completely irrational, right? Why did I stay in that relationship even though it, it was clear that it was toxic? All these other things. Why did I stay at that job that treated me like garbage for 10 years? All these different things. Like, so it's really easy to look at others, but I try to take that and then look at myself and what's going on in my own life. So. Hopefully that gives you some stuff to think about. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna check out either of those books I mentioned, um, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me or The Craving Mind, they'll be down in the description below. All right, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody out there supporting the channel over on Patreon, everybody who supports by buying my mental health books over at TheRewiredSoul.com or getting the merch from the merch store like this comfy, cozy, warm hoodie. All right, <laughs> thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.